In this video, I will be packaging Notepad++ executable installation of file into MSI file using Wix. The main reason for that is to deploy it using Go policy. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page. And that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. Also, in the bottom of the page, you can find more of my videos that are related to this topic. For example, here you can find videos about installing and using Wix. And also I have a video about PSExec and that's because I will be executing the installation of the MSI file that we'll be creating under the system account. And that's to make sure that the installation is successful no matter what user I'm using to deploy the software. And now I will begin this video by downloading Notepad++ executable installation file. And for that, I will use the link that I have here that brings us to the Notepad++ and download page. I will click here and then I will click download. Now I will go to my downloads folder. And here we can see that we have our installation executable file. And the next thing that we need is the Wix configuration file. And for that, I will go back to my GitHub page where I have a few configuration files. One of them is called Notepad++ and this is already prepared fully uh, Wix configuration that you can check out if you want to. But for this video, I'll be using this one that's called template. I will click on it and then I will click uh, here on the download button to download this configuration. I will go back to my uh, downloads folder and I will rename the template and I will call it Notepad++. Then I will right click on it once again and I will open it with Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, it's only an XML file. Basically, it's instructions for Wix on how to package the MSI file for us. And when working with this template, we only care about this part right here. Basically, we need to fill in the information that is specific to Notepad++ installation. And first, we need to name our package. So I will name it Notepad++ installer. Then for exe, we need to provide the executable name. And for that, I will go back to my Git, I mean downloads folder, right click on the executable, select rename. Then I will select the full name to include the extension because this is very important. Then I will right click again, select copy, go back to Visual Studio Code and paste in the value. Then for the path, we need to provide the location where we currently have our executable. And for me, it's my downloads folder. So I will type D slash downloads. I'm pretty sure that your location is different. Then we need to provide silent arguments. And that's because we want the installation of Notepad++ to happen silently. And for that, I will go back to my GitHub page. And I have the necessary switch right here. So I will select it and copy it. And then I'll paste in the value right here. Then for the version, we need to provide the version number for this MSI package. It's kind of unrelated to the software version, but in most cases, I like to keep the same version number for my uh, MSI package as the software that it installs. So I will copy the version number from the executable name and paste in the value. Then for the publisher, this is not very important, but it's a mandatory value. And for it, I will provide a value of let's do automation. And the last thing that we need to provide is GUID. Basically, this is a unique identifier for this package. And to generate it, we can use PowerShell. So once again, let's go back to the GitHub page. And here I have a PowerShell command. So I will select it and copy it. And then I will open a terminal. You can open the regular PowerShell window. And I will paste in the command. And as you can see, every time I enter this command, I get a unique identifier. So I will copy one of those values and go back to my Visual Studio Code, paste in the value right here. And that's basically all the necessary information that we need to provide for Wix to be able to generate an MSI package for us. And now to generate the MSI file, I will go back to my terminal. And here we want to change our location to the directory where we have our Wix configuration file. So it's in my D downloads folder. So I will type CD, D downloads and press enter. If I type there, 
we can see that we currently in this directory have the Wix configuration file and the Notepad++ executable installation. So to generate the MSI file, we need to type Wix build and then provide the Wix configuration file name. So it's notepad++.wxs and press enter. If I go back to my downloads folder, we can see our MSI executable here. And the last thing that we need to do is to see if our MSI file is working. So for that, I will right click on it, select copy. Then I will go to my VMware workstation where I have a Windows virtual machine prepared. And here I have the software folder. I will open it and paste in the MSI file into this folder. Also, as you can see, I have my PSExec executable in this folder. So now we want to open a command line here. I will go to my start menu, type CMD, and run as administrator. Click yes. Now we want to change the location in this command line to the location where we have our files. So for that, I will click here and copy the location. And I will type CD, paste in the location, and press enter. If I type there, we can see our MSI file and the PSExec executable in this directory. Also, if I type who am I, it is saying that this command line is currently running under the admin user. And like I said, I will be performing the installation under the system account. So for that, I will use psexec. So I will type psexec executable name, then minus i for interactive and minus to s to start the installation under the system account. And then we need to provide um, the process that we want to start. So to keep it simple, I will open another command line window cmd and press enter then i will agree with the license terms and here we have another cmd window but this time if i type who am i it is saying that this window right here is running under account named anti-authority system that means that everything that i am doing in this command line i am doing it as a system user so we want to change our directory once again in this command line so cd and paste in the directory. If I type there, once again, we can see our executable and MSI file. So now let's start the M Notepad++ installation. For that, I will type cmd dash c. This is not necessary, but it allows us to see when the installation is fully finished just by looking at the command line. And then I will type the MSI file name. So notepad++.msi. And we want the installation to be silent, so I will add slash qn and press enter. Now we need to wait a bit, and it seems that it completed almost instantly. And now let's look around our system and see what happened. So for that, uh, first I will open a control panel, and for that I will type control in my command line, and it opens the control panel. I will select uninstall a program. And here we have our installed program list. And as you can see, we have our Notepad++ installer installed. That's published by Let's Automation. And this is the version number. But also we have the software itself. And we have two software entries here because we installed the MSI file. And then the MSI file installed the software for us. And it's possible to hide the entry for the MSI file but in most cases, it makes the software installation troubleshooting a bit more difficult, so I like to keep it. And now let's see if Notepad++ is working. So for that, I will go to my Start menu, All Apps, and let's scroll down a bit. And here we have our freshly installed Notepad++. I will click on it, and it seems to be working just fine. And that's it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and see you in the next one.